Okay. This. It's a Honda Rebel 250. This is a 1999 model, and uh, I don't think it's what anybody was expecting, <laughs> including me, to be honest. To start off here, in case you're not familiar, or if you've been living under a rock, the Rebel 250 is a 234cc cruiser bike. It makes about 18 and a half horsepower, and it's pretty much marketed exclusively towards beginner riders, at least in the United States. Um, elsewhere in the world, I really don't know. I think maybe people just ride these. You're asking the wrong person if you're asking me. But in this country, <clears throat> you either have had an experience with a Rebel, or somebody probably told you to buy one as a first bike. Because the, uh, the Motorcycle Safety Foundation uses these motorcycles as training bikes. So, if you took that class, there's a good chance you actually rode one of these. And if you didn't take that class, there's a good chance somebody told you to get one. I'm going to let this guy pass me. So before I get into why I bought this, I'll go over kind of how I got there. <laughs> I decided I need a new motorcycle for the channel because I need something new and interesting that's going to motivate me and get me excited about producing content. And so the best way to do that, I thought, is, you know, it's time to get a new bike and make videos about it. So initially, I wanted to get, like, a big adventure bike. And I wanted to take it off-road and take it camping and, like, see what that kind of stuff is really all about. The problem is my budget, my max budget, was really about $4,000. And any adventure bike at that price point either has a lot of miles on it or is not in the best condition. So I didn't really, I didn't want to buy something that I was going to have to work on, uh, at least mechanically. Like to, I didn't want to buy something that I had to fix. Let me put it that way. So those were kind of out because they were too hard to get a hold of and, you know, in good shape, at least in my opinion. Um, Next I thought maybe I'll get a different dual sport, like maybe a DR650 or a KLR or something like that. Um, but the problem is uh, I just didn't want a dual sport. I didn't want another one. It's like, you know, I've been riding a dual sport forever. I've been making videos about it. And other than the fact that I'll have another search term like DR650, there's really no point in me buying another dual sport to make videos about. At least I didn't feel it didn't inspire me. So then I very briefly considered buying like a CBR 650 and uh, or a or a Kawasaki Versys and maybe doing like a dual sport conversion but the cost of that seemed like it was going to be past my budget based on what the entry level bike cost. So so I decided what I really want is another uh, street bike. Because so I started out on street bikes. I never had a dual sport until I moved to Arizona and started exploring the dirt. And this channel is really about me and my motorcycle interests and what I do with the motorcycles that I buy. I'm still going to do some camping stuff. I went out with Morgan recently and we shot a dual vlog. But along with that, I'm going to do a motorcycle build. And that's where this Rebel comes in. Um, I'm a huge fan of custom motorcycles. I like looking at pictures and stories of bobber builds and, and cafe racers and things of that nature. And I've always thought the Rebel would make a cool platform for a bobber build if you actually have the budget to swap all the parts out and do it right. Um, because a Rebel, if you don't know, is uh, not a very expensive motorcycle. Basically, if you're spending more than $2,000 for a Rebel, at all uh, you're spending too much because you can buy one of these any day of the week for like fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars and it'll run great so I figured for two thousand dollars you can get a base bike that is already going to be in mechanically good condition and then you can build it from there so you could end up with a cool build for not a whole lot of money um, the alternatives really to this would be maybe like a Honda Shadow 
I know I've seen a lot of bobber builds with Honda Shadows. I still wanted to go with one of these because it's small. And, uh, you know, I think I've realized something as my motorcycle career progresses. And that's that I like small displacement motorcycles. <laughs> there's something charming about them. Uh, and there's something fun about being able to ride it at its limit. And, and shift through all the gears. And you can really beat the crap out of one of these. Like I can ride around with full throttle and just bang through gears and it's going to take it. And you know, I'm not going to be going 130 miles an hour when I do it. Um, so there's something fun. It's like as, as an around town machine, there's something uh, that's very fun about it. That guy is a problem. <laughs> so maybe if this works out and you guys enjoy it and I enjoy it, really it's really just about me enjoying it. Um, I figure I might grow some. I might lose some people with this and I might gain some people with this, but ultimately I have to do what I want and that's building a rebel. So yeah, uh, what is a bobber? I don't know if you guys aren't familiar with the custom motorcycle world. A bobber is a style of modifying a motorcycle that's originated, and you, don't quote me on this because I haven't, I did the homework a long time ago. Um, a bobber style motorcycle is something, it, it, like I, I believe in the 50s people would buy like old war bikes and stuff and they would modify them to go racing and the way that you would do that is you would remove anything on the motorcycle that was not required for uh, the function of the bike or I suppose legality reasons so speedometer goes mirrors go turn signals go the headlights and taillights get smaller bodywork goes or gets smaller things of that nature and, and what people ended up doing is creating really cool looking stuff and so today if you want to build a bike um, it's it's still a really popular kind of aesthetic to go for so I'm not just going to take some parts off and call it a day a significant amount of this motorcycle is going to change um, the rear fender is going to be replaced with a swing arm mounted fender that hugs the rear, the rear wheel the wheels are going to be changed to excel dirt bike wheels uh, the front's going to get bigger to a 21 inch, the back's going to get bigger to a 19 inch, and I'm going to put dual sport tires on it. Uh, the seat's going to be replaced with a solo uh, bobber seat. It's not going to be spring suspended because I'm going to keep the rear suspension mounted. I guess that's something I didn't mention. Most bobbers are hardtail motorcycles, meaning the frame is all one piece in the rear and there's no rear suspension. And so to compensate for that on old bikes, they would uh, put a springer seat, so the spring, the seat itself would be suspended by springs. But I'm not going to do that because I'm going to keep the rear suspension because uh, I like it and I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> um, but the fuel tank is going to be replaced with a, a mini Sportster tank. Um, I believe it's only like a 1.6 gallon fuel tank, but this thing gets like 70 miles to the gallon, so I'm not expecting that to be a, a range issue. But on the front end, the uh, turn signals are all going to go, the speedometer is going to go, the handlebars are going to be removed, and I believe I'm going to try to use my old XR650L bars on this. So it'll have a piece of XR in it right at the heart where you can see it and where, I'm, where, you, where you're touching it. It's going to be kind of cool, hopefully, if it looks cool. Um, I haven't test fitted any of this yet. The electronics. The uh, starter switch is going to be relocated. The kill switch is going to be eliminated. Um, the horn, turn signal, and high beam is all going to be eliminated. The choke is going to be relocated to the carburetor. Uh, it's going to look like a totally different bike. My goal really is, when this is complete, that nobody knows what it is. And if you're not into this, that's fine. But uh, it's not the only thing that's going to be on the channel. I'm going to be uploading this. I don't even know what the schedule is going to be. I'm going to upload this stuff as I get it done. And frankly, I'm going to be uh, doing most of the build before I upload this video, so you don't have to worry about me flaking. This is going to get done. <laughs> the thing I'm most concerned with right now is the electronics, because uh, I'm unfamiliar with taking apart a wiring harness and things like that. But uh, I'm looking forward to filming it, I'm looking forward to editing it, and yeah, I'm really excited. Um, so I hope you guys hang out and watch it. And if you're really just here for the dual sport stuff, I mean, stick around. I'm going to do some more camping with Morgan, and hopefully I'll get my equipment sorted by the time that actually happens. Oh, 
Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. That's 65 right there. And by the way, this motorcycle will do 80, all right, easily. It'll actually do 80 miles an hour. I did it on the way back from buying it. Um, it's a, it's a riot. I really, I really can't stress enough. You guys should look at 250s seriously, as long as you can figure out a way to make them cool, which is what I uh, am doing with this. Oh, you know what I forgot? I, uh, I thought about buying an XR 650L and modifying it. Because you can get an XR for relatively cheap if they're in, you know, damaged condition or non-running condition. And I know those bikes pretty well at this point. I feel like I can repair it just fine. Um, the problem is, if I modify an XR, what am I going to modify it to be? And I've seen some really cool scrambler builds, which I'll show you right now, actually. I mean, if you don't like what that looks like, I mean, I don't even know, I don't know if we can be friends. Like, they look so cool. The, uh, the problem is, if you turn an XR into a scrambler, you're taking a really good off-road motorcycle, and you're making it a less good off-road motorcycle, which is not something that I think would be in the spirit of this channel. <laughs> so if you're going to modify an XR, you have to commit to the Cafe Racer street bike-oriented design. And uh, I just wasn't sure how my viewers would respond to that. So let me know what you guys think about making a custom XR. I think it'd be cool, but like I said, um, it would have to be something that would be designed for the street. Um, and I, I don't, don't even bring up Supermotos, okay? I'm tired of Supermotos. I think they're lame. <laughs> okay, they're not lame. But like, I want something that's got custom work done. Like I, I, if I had something like that, I would want a custom seat, a custom frame, a different tank. I didn't. I wouldn't want it to look like a dirt bike at all, you know. And uh, Supermoto looks like a dirt bike with sport bike wheels on it, and that's not really the aesthetic that that uh, that gets me going, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I look forward to videos of this thing, and uh, I, I hope I caught you off guard, everybody. <laughs> um, but I'm. Uh, I'm just really excited to start doing something different and new. So, it's what the channel needs and it's what I need. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>